نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونتوب إليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا ما يهده الله فلا مضل له وما يضل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمد عبده ورسوله صلوات الله وسلامه عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما Jama'ah, before we begin with today's khutbah, if we can just have you move forward. As I'm sure everyone's aware, this is a holiday weekend. And with school and many workplace having off, we want to do our best to accommodate the crowd. So please, inshallah ta'ala, fill in spaces. Let's accommodate each other. Jama'ah, as we continue this week, focusing on Salat al-Jum'ah, on Yawm al-Jum'ah, Today, bi'idnillahi azza wa jal, we focus on what takes place during the actual service. What takes place during the ibadah of when people come to the masjid. And we begin it with the ayah that is in the chapter that is named by this beautiful day as well as the worship of Jumu'ah, Surah Al-Jumu'ah. And it is the ninth Ayah where Allah Rabbul Alameen says, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu idha nudiya lissalati min yawmil jumu'ati fas'aw ila dhikri Allah fas'aw ila dhikri Allah wa dharu al-bayt ذَلِكُمْ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تَعْلَمُونَ O oh, you who have believed, when the adhan is called for the prayer on the day of Jum'ah, then proceed to the remembrance of Allah and leave off trade. That is better for you if you only knew. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this ayah, ahibbati, He is addressing everyone that says, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammad rasulullah. So everyone that considers themselves a Muslim, a believer, Allah is addressing them and He's telling them, those of you that have accepted faith, when the call, for Jum'ah is made, then hasten, proceed, rush to the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in this case, the remembrance of Allah Rabbul Alameen, it takes on the form of the remembrance of what is said during the Jum'ah as well as the Salah that is after it. And he tells them, and he tells us all, Wadarul Bay'ah, stop, 
refrain from, abstain from business dealings. Meaning do not allow whatever it is of your worldly professions, occupations, distractions to prevent you from answering the call. So regardless of whether you're in business, whether you're a farmer, whether you're whatever it may be, it's true for everyone in that sense that when Juma begins, and that's what the call to prayer is there to announce, come to prayer, come to success, that you're supposed to hasten to the remembrance of Allah Rabbul Alameen. And that's where we're reminded time and time again, Allahu Akbar, that Allah is the greatest. Allah is the most important. So that whatever it may be that we're busy with, that we are reminded that it is nothing when it's put to perspective with Allah Rabbul Alameen. And He reminds us, He tells us because He is Al Alim Al Hakim Subhanahu. He is the All Knowing, the Most Wise. That if you follow this advice, that's better for you if you only know. And the believers are those who what? We believe in everything of what Allah Rabbul Alameen teaches us. And we accept it as fact. That's why, alhamdulillah, we are hastening to come to the masjid to offer the salah. You know, that call to the salah, we have this hadith that's in Al-Bukhari that tells us a little bit about the call, the adhan as it's known. The hadith is narrated to, to us by As-Sa'ib ibn Yazid radiallahu ta'ala anhu. He said, إِنَّ الْأَذَانَ يَوْمَ الْجُمْعَةِ كَانَ أَوَّلُهُ حِينَ يَجْلِسُ الْإِمَامُ يَوْمَ الْجُمْعَةِ عَلَى الْمِنْبَرِ فِي عَهْدِ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم وأبي بكر وعمر رضي الله تعالى عنهما فلما كان في خلافة عثمان رضي الله عنه وكثروا أمر عثمان يوم الجمعة بالأذان الثالث فأذن به على الزوراء فثبت الأمر على ذلك. This hadith that is collected by Imam Al Bukhari. A sa'ib may Allah Azza wa Jalla be pleased with them tells us that the adhan on Juma was first said when the Imam sat on the minbar. And it continued that way during the time of Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And during the time of Abu Bakr and Umar, may Allah azza wa jal be pleased with both of them. But during Uthman's time, may Allah azza wa jal be pleased with him. When the people increased and the size of the city increased, he ordered for a third call or a third adhan. Now mind you, jama'ah, the iqama is being referred to as adhan here. So the first adhan is when the imam basically greets the jama'ah and then sits down. And then after that you have the iqama when the salah is to begin. So this third one that Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu instituted, because the quantity of Muslims increased and therefore the city of Matna as a whole increased, he ordered that this third adhan which is really the first adhan, or depending on how you look at it, the second adhan, or the adhan of Uthman radiallahu anhu, to be called in a distant area, it was referred to as a zawra. A distant area, a place within the marketplace of Medina, Allah Azza wa protect the cities and their people as a whole, Allahumma ameen. And then we're told that that's how the practice has continued since then. And in case anybody's wondering, well, why would there be a third? What's the difference? What's the situation? Inshallah, we're going to talk a bit more about the Adhan tonight, Inshallah. So if you're curious and would like to know some more about the history and details of that sort, join us tonight after Salat al-Maghrib, Inshallah. So, the believers, they hear the Adhan and they're coming to the masjid or that they may have come to the masjid even before hearing the adhan. 
Listen to this beautiful hadith as all of these ahadith are so beautiful. An Abi Hurairah radiyallahu anhu qala qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam idha kana yawm al-jum'ah kana ala kulli bab min abwab al-masjid malaika malaika yaktubuna ala yaktubuna an-nas ala qadr manazilihim الأول فالأول فإذا جلس الإمام طووا صحف وجاءوا يستمعون الذكر وفي رواية أخرى متفق عليها فإذا خرج الإمام حضرت الملائكة يستمعون الذكر and both of these are in al-Bukhari and Muslim Abu Hurairah, may Allah Azza be pleased with him, tells us that Allah's Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, when it is Friday, Jumu'ah, that at every door of the masjid, every single entrance, there are angels. And these angels are acting as attendance monitors. They are recording, writing down the names of people as they come in chronological order. The first, the second, and so on. But once the Imam sits, after saying the Salam, they close, they fold, they scroll their scrolls up. And they no longer take attendance and they sit down to attend a dhikr attend the remembrance of what's going to be said in the khutbah as well as the salah thereafter. So think about this. How would you like to be registered in Allah Azza wa Jal's attendance book? Would you like to be recorded as being early? Would you like to be recorded as just on time because there's no such thing as late if your name is not on that list hopefully next Jumu'ah but there's an issue especially with some folks who perhaps may think that the only thing that's important for the Jumu'ah is attending the Salah I think we can understand quite clearly without any dispute that if a person truly wants to be included of those who attended the Jumu'ah, that they need to come in from before that time so that the angels will record and register their name. Well, what happens? So now they come into the masjid, we come into the masjid, the angels have inshallah registered our names. And in case anybody's saying, well, if there's five entrances or more, and at each entrance, there are angels that are recording the names. How are they going to get our names correct considering people are entering in simultaneously, etc. Wallahi jama'a, the angels are better than your best computer systems. You don't have to worry about that. How are they going to know who came in first from this door and then there's also from that door, etc. You know, it's a recent phenomenon of being able to count things down to milliseconds and so on and so forth. They got that down, don't worry about it. But what happens then? What do we do? We come into the masjid and listen to this hadith of what we're supposed to do. عن جندب بن سمرة رضي الله تعالى عنه أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال أحضر الذكر وادنو من الإمام فإن الرجل لا يزال يتباعد حتى يؤخر في الجنة وإن دخلها. This hadith that is صحيح in Abi Dawood. Jundub, may Allah Azza wa Jal be pleased with him, taught us that the Prophet, may Allah's peace and blessings and all goodness forever and always be upon him. He said, attend the reminder. What reminder, jama'ah? I should be clear, we're talking about first and foremost the khutbah and then the salah. Attend the reminder, the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that which is going to remind us of him. Remind us of our purpose for existence, of why He created us, tabarak wa ta'ala. And then draw near to the Imam. So once again, you come in, prime real estate is the first row. And a person wants to pay attention to this. 
Why? Because listen to what the Prophet ﷺ then said. He said, and draw near to the Imam because a person will distance themselves until they are distanced away from paradise. Even though they may still enter it. And Jama'a, part of what we need to understand from this is that Allah Azza wa Jal through His Prophet ﷺ is giving us insight into spiritual matters and into psychology. Right? A person should not want to distance themselves from their imam. It may be that shaitan is playing with a person in such a way that they feel something towards. And spiritually, we need to be mature. We cannot allow shaitan to play games with us in the way that you find so sadly that a person will attend the masjid, will follow salah behind the imam, but yet inside they have something of a disease that shaitan is festering within their hearts. That's why they want to be on the furthest end or in the furthest distance, etc. I'm not saying this about you. I'm speaking in general terms. Jama'ah, the imam for us is a special position. Not because I'm an imam, but because Allah Rabbul Alameen decreed that there should be an imam for the believers. And that's a person that is helping us to strengthen our relationship with Allah Rabbul Alameen. And shaitan is going to cause us to find everything of reasons to want to want to have something to pick at. He's too tall, he's too short. He's too heavy, he's too skinny. His voice is too loud, his voice is too soft. He's like this, he's like that. Yani subhanallah al -adhim. So we want to be cautious of this. Check our hearts. What is it that's really taking place in there? Do I feel something negative? Why? Because what we see in relationships is that people keep a distance because there's something that doesn't feel right in here. What else? Jama'ah, when you come to the masjid and you attend the Jum'ah, especially if and when you've come early, and we know that alhamdulillah, you pray tahiyyat al-masjid, those two rak'ahs, greeting the masjid. And then you may have plenty of time still. And you could utilize that time in the different acts of worship. We mentioned, if you have not read the Surah Al-Kahf, that you can read the chapter of the cave. You can use it to remember Allah Azza wa Jal in all different ways. You can use it to ask for forgiveness. And you can use it to also pray sunnah. But let's understand something that there's not sunnah in the sense of how some brothers and sisters may look at Jumu'ah as zuhr. So they think that Salat al Jumu'ah has four rak'ah sunnah before Jumu'ah. The scholars teach us that there is no fixed number of sunnah for Jumu'ah Salah, rather, it is mutlaqun nafil. It is just to pray anything of what is going to be extra salawat. And we do this until however much time we have before the actual khutbah itself starts. And inshallah azza wa jal in the second half of this khutbah, we will continue from that point. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah lazim li wa lakum fa astaghfiruh. Innahu huwa al-ghafuru rahim Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabiyyina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'ina ama ba'd ala wa inna asdaq al-hadith kitabullahi subhanah wa khayr al-hadhi hadhi rasulihi salawatullahi wa salamu alayhi wa sharra al-umuri muhdathatuha wa kulla muhdathatin bid'ah wa kulla bid'atin dalala wa kulla dalalatin fi al-nar Jama'a some of our brothers and sisters, mashallah, as they are coming into the masjid and they're aware of the greatness of this day, the virtues of this day, Allah's blessings upon them within this day. They have a beautiful practice that they started off with, of course, the dua of coming to the masjid, stepping in with their right foot, 
and then they give charity. They give charity, knowing that what they are sending forth for themselves, that it is goodness upon goodness of following this prophetic guidance, so that the Jum'ah itself is inshallah ta'ala gonna further be enhanced and increase the chances of Allah Rabbul Alameen completely accepting it and blessing that person with their ibadat, their worship as a whole being accepted and that Allah Rabbul Alameen be well pleased with them. And some folks, even though they may not necessarily do that before they come in for the Jum'ah, they understand that khitamuhu misk, that they want to have its ending to be like musk, to be sweet, to be fragrant, to be excellent. And as they leave, they go ahead and they put something in that box. Allah is al kareem the most generous. He is al jawad the absolutely most generous, the source of all generosity. And that we want Allah Rabbul Alameen to answer for us our du'as, our supplications, and to continue to bestow upon us from His bounties. We also want to pay attention to make sure that we are engaging in those things that are going to better allow for Allah Azza wa Jal to continue to share His goodness with us. So we've finished up with whatever there is of our ibadat and we are ready because now the Imam he is starting his khutbah. What are we supposed to do? We need to understand, Ahibba, that although we don't charge a fee to come to the masjid, there is a price for attending, and that price is that you pay attention. And the Prophet wasallam taught us in this beautiful hadith that's in Al-Bukhari and Muslim. That is told to us by Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu arda that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam said, إِذَا قُلْتَ لِصَاحِبِكَ يَوْمَ الْجُمْعَةِ أَنْصِتْ وَالْإِمَامُ يَخْطُبْ فَقَدْ لَغُوتْ He cautioned us to put things into perspective. Listen to this. That if you say to your companion, whoever it is that's next to you, around you. That you say to them, while the Imam is delivering the khutbah, be quiet or be silent. Well, why are you going to tell them, be quiet or be silent? Because they're talking and they're not supposed to be talking. If you tell them, and what are you doing in this case? The person who's telling them, hey, please be quiet. They are enjoining what is right and they are forbidding what is wrong. And in this case, more specifically, they are forbidding what is wrong. But even for them to tell us about how we need to understand our role as active listeners, as students, worshiping Allah Azza wa Jal through the worship of listening and paying attention, being present not just with our bodies, but being present with our minds and with our hearts. Fully listening, understanding how does this apply to me, preparing oneself to be able to convey whatever it is that they have learned to their families and others when they leave. So even that person who tells another who is disturbing this act of worship, shh, be quiet, that they have also committed a vain act. And in this case, it's considered a sin. Well, what do people do who don't understand the language? Jama'ah, whether you understand the language or not is irrelevant. You're supposed to listen. In the olden days, and maybe still in some countries where they don't have microphones and sound systems, the fuqaha have talked about what happens if the person who's sitting so far away, they can't hear anything anyway. What are they supposed to do? that they're supposed to engage in the remembrance of Allah Rabbul Alameen. And listen to this hadith, that is a further caution for us. And this hadith is in Muslim. The Prophet ﷺ said, وَمَنْ مَسَّ الْحَصَى 
فَقْدْ لَغَى He tells us that the person who on Jum'ah, who even touches and plays with the pebbles and things that may be on the ground, that they have also sinned. Alhamdulillah, we don't have pebbles, but what do we have? We have our toes, we have our socks, we have our clothing, we have the carpet, we have our cell phones. Jama'ah, we're supposed to pay attention. We are supposed to follow orders. And wallahi, one of the things that we struggle with so much as Muslims is following orders, following directions. I know that as parents, that's one of the major complaints we have is why do we have to keep repeating the same thing to our kids? Well, maybe we don't look at ourselves and realize that we're not so good at following directions ourselves as adults. That when somebody like Allah Rabbul Alameen is teaching us that for the Jumu'ah, that there are rules and there are etiquettes, and His Prophet ﷺ further elaborated them for us, that as believers we need to be of the category of believers that say, سَمِعْنَا وَأَطَعْنَا We hear and we obey. But if we don't hear and obey Allah Rabbul Alameen, and we don't hear and we don't obey His Prophet ﷺ, how could we expect for others to hear and obey? Allah Rabbul Alameen blesses us to be from those that hear, that obey, and that put whatever they learn to the best of use in practice. Allahumma ameen. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala ali Muhammad. Kama sallita ala Ibrahim wa ala Ibrahim il alameen innaka hamidu majid. Wa barik ala Muhammadin wa ala ali Muhammad. كما باركت على إبراهيم وآل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار ربنا لا تزغ قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب يا الله يا رب العالمين we ask you for all that is good in this life and the best of paradise in the hereafter. And that you protect us from being harmed in this life. And from being punished even the least in the hereafter. Ya Allah, we ask you that you bless us to be from those who will enter into the best of paradise without being punished and without being taken into account. Ya Allah, we ask you that you guide us and that you keep us guided and that you bless us to be a source of guidance for others. Ya Allah, we ask Ya Rabbil Alameen as you are the most merciful that you grant your mercy upon those who have passed away, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Of them, our brother Ahsan Aftab, the father of our dear sister, Dr. Rafia Aftab, as well as our sister Fatih Chowdhury, the mother of our dear brother Muhammad Shafi, as well as our brother, Dr. Akhtar Ali Shah, a founding member of IANT, and our sister Kayaya Safiya to Ya Rabbil Alameen. Ya Allah, we also ask you as you are the bestower of health. Ya Allah, we ask you that you grant health and well-being to all of your slaves and servants. Ya Allah, of them, our brother Abdul Ghafoor, as well as the mother of our dear brother Muhammad Hanif, as well as our dear brother Jalil Zazay, and our dear brother Amruddin Badri, and our dear brother Noor Chowdhury, and Amr Songur and others of them that you are better aware of than us, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Ya Allah, and as you are the protector, we ask Ya Rabbil Alameen that you protect humanity as a whole from tyrants and from violent extremists. Ya Allah, we ask you that you protect them in Egypt, in Syria, in Iraq, in Kurdistan. Ya Allah, in Yemen, and in all the different lands, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Ya Allah, we ask you that you protect them as a whole, regardless of whether they are Muslims or non-Muslims. Ya Allah, provide humanity with the best of leadership. And provide those leaders with the best of counsel. Ya Allah, guide their hearts and guide their minds. Strike in their hearts the love and fear of you such that they will be balanced. Ya Allah, we also ask you as you are the protector to protect our brothers and sisters as a whole who may be traveling during, during these times. Ya Allah, keep them safe and healthy and return them back home safe and sound. 
Ya Allah, we ask Ya Rabbil Alameen, as you are the one that answers all prayers, that you send down rain upon the lands that are scorched, that are droughting, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Ya Allah, those lands that are dry and that the people and animals as a whole are suffering and dying. Ya Allah, we ask Ya Rabbil Alameen to send down rain in abundance upon those lands and around those lands. In Somalia, Eritrea, Sudan, Ethiopia, Ya Rabbil Alameen, the Horn of Africa, Africa and everywhere else in the world. Ya Allah, we ask you that you make it rains of mercy, rains that will fill reservoirs, lakes, rivers, wells. Ya Allah, not anything that will drown, that will destroy, that will flood or harm. Ya Allah, save your servants from death. Save their crops and their livestock from death and destruction. Ya Allah, answer these prayers on their behalf. Allahumma ameen wa aqim as -salam. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. 